no formalities here, professor. Uh, my friends, here is my information, whatever. So we are going to start that PowerPoint presentation PPT. Here is me. Here is me. I'm going to give you the presentation. I will explain you clearly. Uh, first, my uh, my uh, presentation is goal that what I'm going to say you today, and um, you must know this. And you can tell after 10 years also, or you may have the function, the, how to say, that is your um, expectation in next time that you can study about some. Uh, so I don't want that you lose any point from here because I did hard job. I arrange those information only for you. So, how we go? Here is me. I'm going to explain you to all of you. No question, no sound. And then, one by one, again I will start from here, then one by one, we will explain. No question, no answer. It's just increasing knowledge that we are friends, so friendly, friendly, we will discuss together. So, one by one um, uh, slide, we will discuss after finish this one. Okay? May I go? With your permission. Okay. So... Start. Here, British uh, imperialism in India. This is Kazi Abdullah Mamun, International Relation, and this is my English words. Here we go. Before colonization, the Mughal Empire. I will I will try to uh, explain slowly, slowly. Then again, we are coming here. Also. In the Mughal Empire, 1526 to 1757. Muslims were favored over the majority Hindus. Hindu is a religion. The decline of the Mughals began with religious conflict between Muslims and Hindus and resulted in infighting and a divided empire. Muslims were the majority in the northwest modern Pakistan, now where we see the Pakistan map, and northeast modern Bangladesh where I am from, many cities and some villages were mixed. This is the basic idea. Mm -hmm. So here you see the map. Here you see the map. Yeah. End of Mughal rule, 1600 century, the British East India Company, it was a company name, they came here for the uh, business, established trading post at Mumbai. Uh, what is Mumbai nowadays in Madras, Chennai, and uh, Calcutta uh, in uh, India actually. At first, India's ruling Mughal Empire kept European traders under control, but already weakened by civil war and misrule few, India's wish to be defended by 1707. However, the Mughal Empire was collapsing. Dozens of small states, each headed by a ruler or Maharaja. Maharaja means the empire, it's in the local language in Hindi, broke away from Mughal control. British East India Company, this private profit seeking corporation was allowed by the British government to rule India by itself through company rule, in which the British government allowed it to act as representative of the British and make laws as it saw fit in the areas of India it controlled. Gained control after a decisive victory and the battle of Palashi, here is in English the Palashi, uh, how to pronounce it? Palashi? No, in, in our language it's the Palashi, Palashi, War of Palashi, uh, in 1757. Worked uh, with complaint Indian leaders to make rich trading India's cotton, silk, India dye, salt, tea, and opium. Company rule. Uh, when I will read this one, please uh, see the photo. What you can see, uh, there is a people after the company rule. They are very uh, energetic. They are very uh, healthy. They, they are very rich, you saw them, they are very rich, they are very healthy, 
They are energetic people. You see them? No. What do you think? They are rich? No. They are not rich. They are not healthy. That means. Uh, okay, I will read this one. This is the sphere of company rule of British government. Indians' resources were needed to meet the worldwide demand for cheap, washable, lightweight uh, fabrics for clothing and uh, furnishing. This made India richest and irresistible target. Seeking only profit and control, but most actually uh, the powder name is Neil. Uh, you have the white t-shirt like this, white shirt, white, uh, so blue, like a blue, blue color. After you wash it, and then that blue uh, water, you can put this white shirt like this. And when you dry it, it will be so shiny. So it's uh, called Neil. So British government, they cultivate by the Indians, uh, agriculture, uh, agriculture people, farmers. Seeking only profit and control, but mostly profit, the BEIC, that is British East Indian Company, forced many Indians to grow in demand non-food crops, including the opium sent to China. So what they're doing, uh, they grow nil, that uh, powder, when you are growing your uh, rice, uh, your uh, any other uh, food agricultural stuff. But they say they they going to hurry and they force that if you if you don't uh, cultivate their demanding product uh, agri product then they are gonna force you I mean they are gonna shoot you they are gonna do something bad with you so coming that that also coming so they grow their own products even they uh, uh, opium they uh, grow opium in India and they sell it into the China so they make a business. But they don't care about these rich people, but you see it here. Sharing none of the profits, they are not sharing any profits. Many parts of India under the BEICS control face inter intermittent, intermittent uh, starvation with too few farms producing food. That, that means they are not having food, they are not having money, but they are having uh, forced men to cultivate the BEIC uh, product. The British Empire. However, grow incredibly rich. So, because of this, British government was going to be rich, but not the Indian people. So, the Sepoy is Sepoy is a, it's a we call it Sipahi. Sipahi is soldier. So, the East India Company, and Sipahi you can find in Oxford Dictionary also. The East India Company even had its own army, led by British officers and staffed by native Indians called Sepoys. So, you see, the one leader can run thousands of soldiers, right? One leader can run thousands of soldiers. So, they make these policies, they make these tricks. So, they gave officers from the England and they took native Indians as a soldier. So, the native people will kill their native peoples because they know each other uh, in, in their areas. But the, all the orders come from the England and the officer is English. Do you understand this one? The one order shoot, so thousand people will shoot. So they are not having the mind to what to do, what not to do. So that mind belongs to an English person. That's uh, how they maintain it. So made up of Hindu uh, Kasturias, uh, it's a uh, Muslims and Sheikhs, it's a, actually I have to say, um, like Am Khazi. So it's a, uh, some tribe tribal names. So, a North Central Indian religious uh, minority, enough be, uh, willing and loyal recruits were found to allow the British to control all the parts of India they desired. So, wherever they want, they are doing that. They did. How could a few both loads? Um, here is interesting. There is second class citizens in their own country and uh, impoverished by the profit seeking BEIC, Indian space to uh, unite to kick out the British for the following reasons. So, the, here is the reasons that why uh, Indian people they uh, unite against uh, British colonialism. Political leaders were benefiting from British trade and support and saw benefits to moder uh, moder modernization. The British possessed first uh, superior weaponry. Enough Indians were willing to be hired as Sepoy soldiers to defend the British. 
with Mughal decline uh, preceding, the arrival of the British India was divided into small rival kingdoms. Rivalers uh, between Muslims and Hindus, with Hindus resenting centuries of Muslim rule, prevented uniting to face the common enemy. The, ca the caste system made uh, uniting for a common cause difficult. Agent of change, uh, the Sepoy mutiny is a so actually Sepoy mutiny uh, in the 1850 century. Uh, uh, colonized Indians made their first large scale uh, rebellion against the colonizers, led by many Sepoys who turned against their British commanders. The immediate spark to the violence was uh, resent resentment against being insensibly forced to use dress from the scared cow for Hindus and from unclean pigs for Muslims. So now you see, uh, here is the interesting matter. Uh, I am Muslim, so I don't eat pork. So, and the Hindu people, they don't eat beef. And uh, these problems, when ration comes, the food comes from the government, so it's, they are not having idea that which tribes uh, uh, the, what they eat. So Muslim got pork and uh, Hindus got beef. They will die but they never eat. This makes sense. So people were ang angry for that. Uh, the immediate spark to the violence, okay. The underlying cause of course was anger at being treated as second class citizens in their own homeland and the British taking uh, Indians well. So, as I am in Korea, if I treat you, you are a second class citizen and I am a first class citizen, I really don't care about you, I always like, don't give anything to you, that's that, whatever. So, do you feel good? I am a foreigner, I am treating you in your country as like a second class citizen. Do you like it? Of course not. If you, you don't like it, right. And I earn money here by you and what I am giving you small part of that and I am getting all with me in my country. Do you like that? <laughs> of course not. So it was our same situation. Agent of change, this is going to be some areas stayed loyal to Britain uh, but the fighting was forced with revenge killings and uh, atrocities against civilians, women and the children by both sides. So, uh, when I'm going to uh, force you, uh, like if some you, um, how to say, that um, you give me your faith that no, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to tolerate your um, uh, ruling, blah, blah, blah. So what I'm doing, I'm going to hit you, I'm going to uh, force you, and then when you are not uh, moving anywhere, then what I'm doing, I'm going to your children, I'm going to uh, your wife, I'm going to your, your husband. So I'm uh, forced, I'm uh, punished them too, that you follow my order, you follow my order. So British uh, uh, Sikhoi, the soldiers, they start that torturing also. The British managed to keep order, but the Sikhoi military showed uh, that company rule could not protect British investment in India. So the British government took over control of its Indian colonies in 1858, beginning a mere century of direct rule. For these two were thousands of British people flocked to India to increase their presence and to build the railroads, telegraph lines and other infrastructure needed for long term rule over hundreds of millions of Indians. Instead of driving the British out, the Sepoy mutiny caused a massive increase of their British presence in India. Needing a complaint workforce for such a large colony, the British began to educate wealthy and high caste. Caste means uh, in Hinduism we have five caste. So caste is classes, classes of people. Uh, it depends on how what they work. So uh, up to their work is the cast casting system. So to educate wealthy who has money, high caste Indians who is uh, higher class, 
uh, to get them to adapt both the English language and British constraints. Uh, one, one, I, I mean, I feel that if I am going to rule you in a smiling way, in a political way, so first, I need to make you a good friendship. Second, I need to change your culture. I need to give my, mix my culture to you, and I'm not going to take your culture. That is. And third is religion change. I'm going to give you something, I'm going to show you something that lets you know, change your religion because it's a great faith. When you uh, you will come on my track, then I'm Muslim, you're Muslim, I'm Christian, you're Christian, I'm Hindu, you're Hindu. So you will have a uh, sympathy with me. Oh, it's the same religion, so I can uh, I can give him something. Uh, we can do it. And um, like this way, they, they try to change. And when I'm wearing better clothes than you, of course, you uh, looks to me two more times, right? Where I'm well dressed, where I have a good um, uh, what is it, perfume, then you will smell me two times more than any other people. So British, they showed that. The results were many Indians aiding in colonial rule and the creation of favored Indian uh, elites who could act like a gentleman. So you see the Englishmen, they have tie, coat, and so so good looks good right so smart so gentle people and in Indian system is that they do like this and it's also native uh, religious based dress so uh, when in front of Englishman it looks like oh it's damn and Englishman is gentle so they give this one to the elite people in India so there they, in India there is two class that is one is really gentleman and one is poor uh, Indians so they make this part in the culture, so this may change the cultural mind. The new Indian middle classes uh, slowly grew tired of the injustice of British rule. People was fed up. Really. The new nationalists root in both English and their regional languages and uh, turned to aspects of Indian tradition, especially Hinduism as a really ground of national pride all the muslims and the lower caste were generally excluded uh, in muslimism uh, this religion we don't have any caste but uh, in that time the hindu people is a majority was hindu so they count as a uh, poor muslim uh, and rich muslim 1885 a large group of this new Indian nationalist founded the Indian National Congress, INC, to pressure colonial leaders for more rights and uh, greater self-rule and independence. Railroads, the third largest network in the world at the time, enables India to develop a modern economy and connected regions. A modern road network, telephone and telegraph lines, dams, bridges, and uh, irrigation canals were created. So when I'm going to get from you something, then you are protesting my ruling. So then I'm coming to give you more opportunity. What uh, what is new for you? So irrigation is really it was work out on that time. Because uh, do, do you understand irrigation in the petty field? Uh, petty field there is a growing rice, right? They, they need water. So in irrigation, the, the water canals, they're making the water canals and the rice grows so fast and good one. And the more product, uh, more produce than before. So uh, the farmers, they like it. And uh, sanitation and public health improved. Uh, uh, schools and, you know, malaria, phylaria, cholera. It was, um, it's a plague, uh, malaria. Uh, what is by uh, water? So. This sanitation and public health, uh, actually, it's true that it start to improve on that British colonial, colonial time. Uh, school and colleges were founded and the literacy increased. So they made school and colleges. So uh, the Indians, they start to go uh, in uh, their school, where is Western culture, where is Western education, history, with Indian culture and history. Before we had, the name is Patshala. Uh, what is only the religion, religious based education, but they started the Western mixed education. 
British troops cleared central India of bandit end of to local warfare among uh, competing local rulers. British held most of the political and economic power. Uh, this is really negative impact which uh, the people naturally we be we become uh, the jealous of people. So uh, uh, profitable in industries such as cotton, salt, construction, tea, etc. were firmly controlled by the British. Uh, no one likes to uh, controlled by someone. Uh, conversation to e cash, uh, converse. Conversion to cash crops reduced food production, causing feminized uh, in the late 18th century, 18th century. Loss of cultural uh, practices and languages. Uh, here is also one. Uh, that is, uh, we have uh, some people uh, who control our small, small villages. In Korea also, I saw the, the villages, the small, small uh, uh, government office. The villagers can come and uh, they can talk each other, right? In the village, everywhere. So we had also the same. Uh, but then they started talking about that we are losing our language. In India, it's a big country, so we have the uh, really uh, huge language. Mm, uh, so they are talking about that we are losing our language, we are losing our culture, because our culture is uh, Tupi, Punjabi, it's a name, it's a name of clothes. So Tupi, cap, it's a different Tupi. And Pagri uh, in Punjab, it's uh, like this way, Pagri in Punjab. I, I will show you, uh, I, I will have another presentation about the culture, so I will show you that. So uh, they are thinking that we are losing our religious faith, we are losing our culture, we are losing our uh, um, languages. So uh, they also protest by just from the villages. Divisions between uh, Anglo Anglicized uh, elites and uh, traditional Indians. So it's all make a part, both two part may have. Uh, humiliation of being inferior in one's own home. What was negative for the British? Uh, paid for infrastructure, roads, telephone, railroads, okay? So British uh, invest here. Paid for education, yes, they invest here. Money spent on military and government in India. Uh, British first, they showed us the gun. The gun. Before we got, we had the sword uh, in Choi Kondo. You see the CKD Choi Kondo. There's a sword point in So we had that one. But British uh, introduced us past the gun, the bullets. So they invest that one. Uh, needed a large military presence to maintain control. It's a huge land, huge country. So you need a huge battalion to maintain this one and they invest there. Created a class of educated Indians, the high -end sea, who would force the British to leave India in 1947 is the last time of India, less than a century after the beginning of direct rule. So in, in 1947, India comes to direct rule by the Indian government, by the Indian people. In the short video. March 1947, Earl William Outland and his wife Edwina arrive in New Delhi. The great grandson of Queen Victoria and second cousin to George VI, Mountbatten brings a regal presence to the drama of India's independence. As the last viceroy, he bears responsibility for India's fate. 2nd of April, 1947. I have now completed my first week in office. I should like to be able to paint an encouraging picture of my first impressions, but feel it would be misleading if I did so. The scene there is one of unrelieved gloom. At this early stage, I can see little common ground on which to build any agreed solution for the future of India. The only conclusion I have been able to come to is that unless I act quickly, I may well find the real beginnings of a civil war on my hands. My May, attempts to create a unified India have failed. Gandhi retreats from political life. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, leader of the Muslim League, and Jawaharlal Nehru, a 
the Indian National Congress conceived to divide India. Fearing a total loss of control, Mountbatten brings forward the transfer of power to August. Two nations will be created by partition, a secular India and a new homeland for India's Muslims, Pakistan. Nehru addresses the people of India. Long years ago, we made a fist with destiny. And now the time comes when we shall redeem our pledge. At the stroke of the midnight hour, when the world sleeps, India will awake to life and freedom. The 15th of August, 1947, the British Empire in India has come to an end. The last Viceroy, Louis Mountbatten. The flag raising in the salute would have amid scenes of the most fantastic rejoicing. As the flag broke, a brilliant rainbow appeared in the sky, which was taken by the crowd as a good omen.
so that is a simple description to you but after that it uh, there is 1971 there is 1952 it's a modern story about india that after the separation what happened so now we are going uh, i think we are in short time and in short time how to discuss if you feel really interested about this story and uh, the history then google it search it many more scholars they will come there uh, you can find the good ideas from there and uh, for a little bit more discussion we are going inside now we will uh, discuss one by one if you have anything to say please go on i will show one by one if you have anything to discuss then let's discuss together This is a Mughal uh, Empire, I think it's known. But British East Indian Company is a private profit taking corporation. So in short, that uh, first we have, as a uh, being an Indian, we had a company uh, like Samsung, like LG. It's a company, right? So this kind of company they comes to India to uh, purchase something to uh, make a business. But day by day they uh, arrange. Uh, they are soldiers, sepoy, they, uh, uh, they organize uh, uh, English uh, so battle, battalion for the family. First they say that this battalion for the safety and security because they have really expensive products so they need to secure it. But after that it's uh, going wrong, uh, they become the ruler of uh, India, it's uh, 175 or 178. Uh, years uh, long, and this is the uh, ruling uh, credit for us that what we can. And uh, one thing, this uh, story, the reality say that when we give the pressure to the people, naturally we will get that same pressure. Uh, maybe today, maybe tomorrow, maybe after century. But we hear it. So here also saying it's just a revenge that uh, what we lost we get again. So here is the mutiny. It's a long story, actually, long history. So uh, it's better you watch some movies or you watch some documentary. Maybe you will get some sort of idea. But this story, as professor said, that you can study whole years. I mean, whole of your life. That uh, one by one, one by one. You can do several PhD. Uh, change the situation here also. And we must say that uh, the railroads and other developed uh, uh, communication system or developed Western uh, uh, civilization we also came from the British. So we are thankful for that. That they introduce us their culture and uh, they took our culture too. In uh, uh, England and all over the uh, English areas, you can see uh, maximum uh, in, hin in Hindi language, some Bangla language, it becomes in, uh, English now. And uh, our culture, uh, maximum is mixed over there. Even in America, there is the uh, Indians who fight for the India American liberation. So there is a long history. There is a long history because we generation by generation we mix up. Because 200 years, it's not fun. Uh, that uh, someone live in our home and we also be there. So, and uh, before we, we do not have that uh, political parties, but because of British, we need to make a uh, political parties. And from that day to till now, we have several political parties in three countries India, Pakistan, and Bangladesh. So, uh, they introduce us there. So, we are going for the development. But now it's still really the public country. So if you say uh, done, then I'm going to say you thank you. If you have anything to say. Thank you then for your really kind uh, attention and please give a big clap for me.